Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be sewing McCall's 6969. Uh, it's a jumpsuit pattern and I'm going to be going with view C. As you can see I did film an intro but I just wasn't feeling it so here's the footage while I actually talk what I want to talk. Cool. I'm going to be making a size 12 in this pattern using a cotton poplin that I got from Spotlight. Um, I have about two meters of it. Two meters was just the right amount for view C. I went into this project with only one alteration in mind and that was to replace the elastic waistband with a D-ring belt. I find that elastic waistbands don't flatter me, so I'm going to change it. What does flatter me? Belts. And that's what we're going to use today, as you'll see later. Another reason that I didn't make any alterations from the beginning is because normally I have to shorten the waist and also put a sway back in. However, because I was going to be using a belt, I was okay with it being like, you know, a bit puffy on the top, puffy on the bottom. That's what the situation was going to be. So it didn't have to be a perfect fit. It just had to be well enough and the belt would do the work for me. Later you'll see what a mistake this was. So now you can see me pinning and sewing the side seams and the back seam. This pattern doesn't have a waist seam, which is a reason why I pretty much enjoyed it and it came together so quickly, would recommend. And you can probably see that I'm just going straight for it pinning wise. My strategy for most projects is to pin as much as I can before I get the sewing machine out so it all just can be in one fell swoop or as little swoops as possible. Now we're overlooking the raw edges. Not much else to say there. Alright, so this is a trick that I learned a long time ago. One of the screws on the sewing plate on my overlocker kind of sticks up and it has a bit of a metal nip and I find that my fabric often gets caught on it and then it can damage the fabric. So what I've done is I just have a piece of sticky tape and problem solved. So as you can see, I'm doing things at my own pace. I'm using my pinking shears on the raw edges of the collar because overlocking it will make it a little bit too bulky. I'm also clipping the corners with my scissors so I can turn it out for a sharp point. Now turning the collar inside out so I can baste along the open edge of the collar before attaching it to the jumpsuit. The ends will be dealt with once it's attached to the jumpsuit. To get a sharp point, I've just used whatever I've had on hand. You can see me trying with the knitting needle, it not working so great, so then I've gone to the seam ripper, which is risky business, but so a collar. You can see I'm a little bit stumped trying to follow the instructions for the collar and the left button front here. Now while the instructions were accurate, uh, it was a bit hard to visualize in 3D when you're looking at 2D depictions. The collar was essentially an insert seam and we all know how smoothly they go. followed the instructions and used a rolled hem for the sleeves. I did this by overlooking the raw edge and turning it over twice. For the shorts, I turned up the hem by one inch, ironing it in place, so then I could use my blind hem foot with ease. You can see now it's all starting to come together and it actually looks super good. You can't tell that my points aren't perfect on my collar, but that's going to be a me problem, not a you problem. Next up is to pick some buttons. Did I waste a lot of time doing this? Yes. Did I think I needed six when I only needed four? Yes. 
So if you've watched my first video, you'll know that I'm lazy. So when it comes to marking button holes when you're cutting the fabric, I ain't got time for that. So instead what I do, I pin the openings together with a pattern tissue paper on top and I also then reduce for the seam allowance. And then I mark my button holes. I find that it's easier to deal with and you don't have to worry about losing the markings in the process. Have I made the mistake of marking button holes including seam allowance when the seam was already sewn? Yes. Be better than me. Don't do that. I learn, you learn. Yay. Controversial opinion. I prefer installing buttons than zippers. Sewing tip, I actually sticky tape my buttons in place so they don't move around when I put the presser foot down. Every time I think I can do without it, whoa, big mistake. Just use the sticky tape. Sustainability problems, I know. But what are we gonna do? We need straight buttons. So now it's time for the belt. I'll be using Vintage Vogue V8811. Um, it comes with the belt pattern that I've used before. It was very good. Use it again. It's actually not a D-ring belt pattern. However, I pattern hacked it to be. Essentially all I'm doing here is I'm trying to get the right angle for the triangle tip. So now that all the seams were sewn, I tried it on. Remember how I said not checking for any adjustments was gonna be a mistake? Well, surprise, surprise to me, as someone who normally has to shorten the waist, I actually had to lengthen it. But again, we don't have a waist seam, so what are we gonna do? Well, a good old fashioned gusset's what's gonna happen. For the gusset, I'll be taking some inspiration from athleisure wear. Gussets are commonly used to increase the range of motion, or in this case, to eliminate camel toe. And did it work? Yes, yes it did. All right, so here I am being an awkward dork, showing off my brand new jumpsuit. I actually really love it. I'm surprised how well it turned out. In all, this pattern was super easy to make. Even the hard parts were easy to solve. I would rate the finished look to be a Princess Charlotte. It's fun, 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 but you know she's the boss. I think I will definitely make this pattern again, and I might even just use the gusset approach next time, because I love the fit everywhere else, and I fear that if I add length to the waist, it will just throw off all the proportions. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this make. Leave a comment below on what patterns I should make next. Subscribe if you'd like to see more makes. And see you next time. Bye.